Testing. Okay. Am I off now? A father is like none other. We reflect back on how they have been an important part of our lives. It's in the embarrassing things, like the dad jokes, and in the unsung things, like showing up. It's in the expected things, like providing for the family, and in the unexpected things, like learning to French braid. Today, we passionately celebrate these fathers and the men who took up the fatherly role where other men failed or sadly passed on to glory. You have modeled for us what real men should be. And because of you, we have a more wholesome view of our Father in Heaven. Thank you, Dad. Good morning and welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church, both people here in person and through the digital divide. This morning I have just a few announcements. Um, one is we're, they're still accepting donations for the shelters and you can turn in your donate uh, for the pets, the creatures of our creators, and you can turn in your donations to either the church office or PD's house over there in the corner. Um, also, uh, the friends at Marion Manor Nursing Home are looking for prizes for their activity closet. I worked there for eight years, so I can tell you they really love their candy and their prizes that they get, and they are cherished. So if you would like to do some spring cleaning or do some shopping, there's a list in the bulletin of things that they are looking for. And now, take a deep breath in and out. And let us turn our hearts toward worship with the prelude. Please join me in the call to worship. Our souls long for you, O God. Where are you? In raging wind? In trembling earth? In blazing flames? Our souls long for you, O God. Where are you? Meet us once more, O oh God, in stillness, in silence, in smallness. Come now, O oh God, enter our hearts and minds, present now for you.
Good morning. I invite the children to join me. Yeah, that's fine. Either I'm getting shorter or you're getting taller. <laughs> okay, guys. The Bible lesson today is how to honor your father. We will work together to discover what honor means. Let's act out what we can do when we see these different type of people, okay? So the first is a soldier. When an army soldier comes into a room, what, oh, right here, hi. <laughs> what hand signal do people sometimes make? Does anyone know? If you saw an army soldier, what would you do? Noise. What would you do? Noise. Noise? How about, has anyone ever seen? Yes, that's right. We would salute. So let's all, let's all salute. Yeah, we would salute because saluting is a way to honor. And that means that we know that soldiers are important people who risk their lives to keep us safe. Now, how about, how about a pastor? When a pastor begins to pray, what do we normally do with our hands and eyes? We shut our eyes and we fold our hands like this. And if it's an echo, we say the words that we use for our hands. That is most excellent. So let's, let's, let's try to do that. Let's fold our hands and bow our head. So now we're showing respect for the pastor when he leads us during prayer. Okay, here's the next one. How about, how about a teacher? What are you supposed to do in a classroom to answer your question when a teacher asks? That's right. Do we raise our hand? Yeah. Yes. Let's all raise our hand together like we have an answer for the teacher. Excellent. So when children raise their hand, this shows honor for the teacher because they have an important job and they help you learn. How about this next one? What's this? Yes, a flag. Now, what would you do with your hand when you say the Pledge of Allegiance? Where do you put it? You, put, um, you take your right hand and you put it on your heart, but I think this is my right hand. So there you go. Yes. yes. So when we put our hand on our heart when we see the flag, this shows honor and respect for our country, the United States of America. Now, how about a friend? Let's say you're at a park, and you saw your friend across the park. What would you do? You'd wave. That's right. Thank you. We'd all wave to, let's all wave to our friend. Hi, Judy. Hi, Amy. Hi, Billy. Yes, yeah, so when we wave to our friend, it shows that we're happy to see our friend. It means our friend is important to us. In Exodus 20, verse 12, it teaches us, Honor thy father and mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. And so in honor of Father's Day, I would like to honor my father who's no longer with me. My dad taught me many things, two of which still inspire me today. When I was a little girl, he taught me how to sail. I have very fond memories of us sailing together on Lake Erie. My aunt Father also taught me how to love and care for animals. I loved animals so much that I'm now part of our group, the creatures of the creator here at Unity. So when you see your father and parents, discover things that you can do to honor them today. Do you have anything that you know that you will do on Father's Day today? Yeah? Give them presents, yes. I make them a sweet card, nice, yeah. Take them somewhere, yeah, maybe even a park, picnic, yeah. Uh, we're going to. Ah, okay. which one are you going to do? Uh, I was going to say that we'll take them to a restaurant. Ah, so that's nice, that's nice. Well, I'll give you an apple just for that. How about that? <laughs> is that a real apple? It yes, is. It is. So, so, so when you go see your parents or grandparents or your dad today, I, I put the word honor on little sailboats in memory of my dad. So you can, you can color them, create them, whatever you like. Yeah, uh, you know why I brought an anchor? Because sometimes God, 
our father is the anchor of our families, right? I read honor on there too. So now let's bow our heads, fold our hands and pray and honor thy father. Father, in your eyes, I've seen God's love. In your word, I've heard his wisdom. And through your life, I found his grace. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, do you want to keep this? Okay. You want the flag? Okay. I'm reading today Psalms 42 and 43. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while men say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go with a multitude, leading the procession to the house of God with shouts of joy and thanksgiving among the festive throng. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar, Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. This is Psalm 43. Vindicate me, vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You are my God, my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send forth your light and your truth, Let them guide me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then will I go to the altar of God, to God, my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the harp, O God, my God. Why are you downcast, O my soul? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. This is the word of our Lord. In confession, we tell the truth about ourselves and our broken world, and the God of all truth who knows our limitations and loves our imperfections has already forgiven us and will always forgive us. Trusting in God's infinite mercy, let us dare to tell the truth in prayer together. Please join me in the prayer to confession. God of grace, we have harmed your children whom you love. Because we do not understand them, We segregate them, we reject them, we demonize them, and we hurt them. Forgive us in your infinite love and teach us to welcome all of your children until our hospitality is as wide as your mercy. Help us to understand others as we wish to be understood. Guide us to love one another as you love us. And join me in a moment of silent confession.
This is the truth. You are not the labels other people, others place on you. You are more than the boxes you check. You are not the side of the aisle on which you stand. For all of you are one in Jesus Christ. You belong to Christ and Christ alone. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Now let us share the peace of Christ with one another. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for the demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank and into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herds saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened. And when they came to Jesus, they found a man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all of the people in the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got in the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Just prior to the story in Luke is the passage where Jesus calms the storm. They were teaching and Jesus wants to go over to the other side of the lake. And Jesus fell asleep on a cushion, woke up to the disciples freaking out about drowning. Jesus told the storm to stop and it did, leaving the disciples astonished as Jesus establishes authority over even creation. When they arrive on the other side, Jesus shows his authority over something else. This shows the disciples' frame of mind when they got to the country of the Gerasenes. Basically, as soon as Jesus arrived, this episode happened. A naked man was living among the dead bodies. He is unnamed, but you may refer to me, uh, you may hear me refer to him later as the demoniac. Basically, he was an outcast because he broke through the shackles on his hands and feet and got past the guards that were trying to detain him. He had to live somewhere else that wasn't around people. And what was the first thing that this man said to Jesus? Not hello, not go away, but rather he proclaims that Jesus is the son of the God most high. When the disciples had just questioned Who is this man that even the wind and waves obey him? This random man living alone in the tombs proclaims exactly who Jesus is. The next part of the story seems kind of peculiar. The legion doesn't want to go into the abyss, which is a place uh, designed for Satan and Satan's creatures. So legion implies that there are thousands of unclean spirits in the man. So when it says there was a large herd of swine nearby, think thousands 
of swine. And there are people who are tending to those swine. That's a good clue that they were not Jewish. So while this man lived alone, there were people around to see this take place. Jesus allows the legion to go into the swine and they immediately jump off the cliff and into the lake and drown. Can you imagine looking over the cliff and seeing thousands of dead swine in a lake? It must have been quite the scene. But now what are the swine herds supposed to do? What they do do is run off and they tell people. And those people came to see for themselves. They saw a man who had been healed sitting at Jesus' feet. And they became scared and told Jesus to leave. The man was in his right mind again. He was whole again. Not staying in the gross places doing the weird things. And he had Jesus to thank for that. He wanted to follow Jesus. Jesus could have brought the man around with him and used him to prove his mighty work to the masses. Seems a little bit easier than performing all those miracles all the time to get more followers or in our terms today, more butts in the pews. But Jesus doesn't need to do this. He is fully man and fully divine, after all. And Jesus is not just focused on having the crowd follow him, just like pastors are not interested in having a crowd follow them, but rather a crowd to shepherd. Jesus was focused on creating disciples Jesus was focused on mission. Jesus wants to equip the people to go out and to fulfill God's mission in the world and spread the good news themselves. Now, I have to admit, the big elephant in the room today, the past few weeks have been a bit of an emotional roller coaster. We are sad that our pastor of 17 years is retiring and leaving. We are happy and celebrate the honorable retirement and all of those years together. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Pastor Dennis guiding me and having faith that I was called to do more. He has done much for the kingdom of God and will continue to do so in his new role. He spent a lot of time nurturing this church's ability, desire, and drive to be a missional church. And this is a church who nurtures one another, both inside and outside of these walls. We equip people to fulfill God's mission. It is part of our identity as a church, and it will continue to be a part of who we are. I think one emotion that I still have left to name is excitement. We have an exciting mission to continue. And I'm very excited to see what our future holds as a congregation. To take words that Dennis usually said, God is out working ahead of us. And I think that is true. In the story, the demoniac wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus wants to equip the people to go out into the world and share his mighty acts of love. So too should we go out and share God's mighty acts of love. I have been on my soapbox recently uh, talking about how to nurture future leaders of the church uh, regarding trauma. And if you've ever cared for children or have your own, this argument might sound sort of familiar. But the conversation surrounding how to nurture people has led to some pretty interesting conversations about leadership. And what the conversation comes down to for me is whether we nurture people by saying, do as I say, or rather, do as I do. One of those is a lot of talk, which may be enough for some people. The other is a lot of action. Do as I do is not something that needs stated. It's like when a kid is sad and we rub their back to console them, And then when somebody else is sad, they know how to react, to rub their back and console them. This is an exchange that happened between me and my nephew a couple years ago. But we know we need to show God's love through action. 
We need to show up. And we need to be with people in their time of need. We need to sit with people. We need to show we care. I think the pet blessing was a good way to show we care to the neighborhood and to the people outside of these walls. No need to tell people what they need to be doing. Rather, just care for their pets and their families and their entire well-being. And it's true in the coming months, things may be a little different. There may be some bumps in the road, but I know we are capable of sharing God's love with the world around us, and I've seen it. We have compassionate care groups, and we visit people who can't make it in, and we send things out so people know we are thinking of them. We are continuing live streams so people can remain connected who can't leave their homes or in other states. We extend hospitality. We even use gluten-free communion bread so that more can share at the table. God is guiding it all, and the Holy Spirit is here moving and will continue to do so. Jesus is preparing the way for future ministry. When the demoniac declares what Jesus and the Lord has done for him, people will be curious. The crowds have a personal connection now because that guy who used to live in the tombs told them everything that Jesus did for him. They will want to know more about this man, Jesus, who works miracles and heals the sick. They will gather around when Jesus returns to hear what Jesus has to say. God is preparing the way for our future ministry too. The demoniac is now a full believer in Jesus and his great works. He was to proclaim how much God had done for him and he did. And it reminds me of a couple years ago in one of my classes, we learned the formula for a form of prayer that I've been practicing every week at my internship. The first thing you do is you name God, however you want to. Nurturing God, sustaining God, redeeming God. The second and the important thing, my point here, is you name the ways that God has been faithful in the past. You name what God has already done for you. Kind of like, we know you're an awesome God because you've already done all of these things for us. And then third, you ask for your intercessions. You ask whatever it is that is on your heart that you want to be talking to God about. So now I want to ask you, what has God done for you? In your life? In the church? What has God done for this church? And what do we want God to continue to do for this church? And how are we called to help fulfill that? Will you pray with me? Saving God, full of redeeming grace, you have walked alongside this congregation since the beginning. You work in and through each of us and have blessed each of us our church, our ministry, and our missions. Continue to walk beside us. When we get discouraged, when we get frustrated, when we feel sad, help us to feel the Holy Spirit move. Help us to feel the peace and discernment and wisdom that comes only from you. When we rejoice, help us to rejoice also in you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Will you pray with me? Holy God, one and three, three and one, hear us as we pray for your blessing. We pray this morning for the church. Help us when we are feeling hopeless. Be with us in this time of transition so we may know your will and discern with a disciple's heart. Be with the PNC as they continue on with their difficult work. Raise us up to face the journey before us as the body of Christ in the world. We pray for the world. We pray for war to cease. We pray for peace. Stand with those who feel forgotten or alone. We pray for all of those with addictions and in recovery, those feeling grievous losses like the Walter family and the family of John. Give refuge to those who have been cast aside and convert those whose gods are hate and fear. We pray for this community. We, let us no longer be divided by our race, our status, or our gender. Unite us in compassion for one another. We pray for those who have endured fires this week. Be their strength and their guide during this time. We pray for loved ones. Comfort those whose struggle and fears weigh heavily on their hearts this day. We pray for healing in the lives of Marsha, Dilly, Ruth, Loretta, and Leslie. Help them feel your comfort and compassion pour over them. Show them your healing and steadfast love. All this we ask of you, Lord God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And we pray these things the way you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now as Elder Mike Clusan comes forward to share the Stewardship of Life offerings moment, I want to invite you to think how you are to give of your time, your talents, and your treasures towards the mission of God that this church is working for. Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to Unity Presbyterian Church, and happy Father's Day to you all. It's summertime, so that means it's time for the Pentecost offering. The Pentecost offering focuses on the youth in and outside of the church. The focus is in three directions. Young adult volunteers, also known as YAV, which focuses on young adults aged 18 to 30 guiding youth aged 12 to 18, and child advocacy under, for the under 12 crowd. The YAV, the Young Adult Volunteers, trains and equips young adult volunteers to engage in mission in 13 sites in the U.S. and around the world. It provides assistance in funding in loan department, medical assistance, living stipends, retreats, orientation events, and counseling. An example of this would be Echoliah Hirams and Noah Westfall, both alums of the PCUSA YAV program and have lives rooted in their faith building experiences. Echoliah spent her 2016 to 2017 year serving in the Philippines, 
She expressed interest in pursuing a medical career, so the YEV site coordinator was able to customize her experience based on her vocational aspirations and interests. She volunteered in health clinics, which solidified for her that medicine was where she was being led. Noah spent his 2018 to 2019 serving Texas Impact's the most vulnerable. Working at Texas Impact was excellent preparation for his current role as program coordinator for the Primary Care Collaborative, a Washington, D.C. based health care advocacy nonprofit that advances comprehensive primary care to improve health and health care for patients and their families. Guiding youth for the age, ages 12 to 18 has a new program called the Senior Project. This program offers a path and plan for graduating seniors to explore faith, community, and vocation. It also funds the Presbyterian Youth Terrenium, which happens every three years and has over 3,000 high school age youth, youth leaders, and young adults. It also supports the ministry for Presbyterian youth in general. The third is Educate a Child, Transform the World. The goal of this initiative is to motivate and inspire Presbyterians to better the lives of children by joining in God's ongoing transformation of the world by working and advocating to ensure equitable, accessible, quality public education so that all children created in the image of God may grow in the fullness of their lives, the fullness of their lives, sorry. This is a relatively new program started in 2014. The Pentecost offering is distributed as follows. 25% goes to YAV, 25% goes to guiding youth, and 10% goes to educate a child, transform the world. The other 40% stays right here at Unity Presbyterian Church for our mission outreach to youth and others in need. You can give by using the envelopes in the pews or by going, which are white by the way, or by going to the church's website, Unity Presbyterian Church, all one word, and going to the bottom of the page and giving, giving there. Just make sure that you make a note that it's for the Pentecost offering, or you can mail it into the office at the church's address, Unity Presbyterian Church, 1146 Green Tree Road, Pittsburgh, PA, 15220. And again, please put Pentecost offering at the bottom of the envelope. Please give what you can to help youth and young adults to achieve their goals in life. Always remember that there is no contribution too small, so please give what you can to help youth everywhere to achieve their goals in life, because if we all give a little, it adds up to a lot. So thank you for your support. Thank you.
Generous God, we give you thanks for all your blessings to us. Use these gifts we offer as a sign of your great love for the world so that all may know and share the abundance of your grace. In your holy name we pray, amen. Now receive the benediction. Things are always breaking, but things are always mending. Not with time, as they say, but with intention. So go, love intentionally, extravagantly, and unconditionally, because the broken world waits in darkness for the light that is you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. Today and always. Amen. <laughs>